Hey everyone, all this kind of uh, evidence keeps telling me is that people that are considered to be on the right, right, or in opposition to the left, they do seem to be, and this is, you know, this is just my opinion here, right, subjective opinion, I have no proof, conclusive evidence that I can offer up to give you that and say, hey, I'm 100% right, so I'll tell you, I could be completely wrong. But people on the right seem to be more than willing to fight amongst themselves, right? To hammer out ideas, oppose each other, right? And reject each other's premises much more than those on the left. The left seem much more docile and sheepish. Don't you think those that, that align themselves on the political left, they seem to be all willing to just put their head down, right? Not do any critical thinking, not be individuals and just go along to get along with the collective. People on the right keep showing that it's like, oh, look, they can't organize. Well, you're, you're right. They can't. People on the right, I guess, when you're using politics. I'm all about philosophy, but I'm trying to, you know, play this political game that they, they like to play, right? And delve into it and point out the stupidity of it. But anyways, but the people on the political right, which would predominantly be, especially conservatives, are supposed to be, you know, supposed to be about being strong and independent and, you know, Pick yourself up by the bootstraps, da 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 You know, the whole thing, right? Greedy, right? All selfish. You know, the whole thing about what they try to put forth and present about conservatives, right? As far as political ideology. It's like, but they don't, it's like trying to herd cats. It's, it doesn't work out too well to try to herd cats. Is it possibly be that they're much more individualistic than the people on the uh, opposing side of the political spectrum? right? It sure as fuck seems that way to me. And exhibit A, although it's at this stage of the game, might be exhibit Z or Z, 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 Z. I don't know how many times you got to go through the alphabet before we start to realize this stuff. But hey, and this is in reference and in regard to rebel media and the fallout and the consequence of all this infighting, right? And yeah, it seems like uh, Ezra doesn't seem very good or adept at, at trying to uh, suppress the flames of hatred or or, or uh, anger that's directed towards him as the as the CEO of that particular corporation, Rebel Media. But we're seeing, like, was it Gavin McGinnis, now Faith Goldie, uh, that other young lad in the UK, Brian Lilly, et cetera, et cetera. I'm forgetting a few names I know, but yeah, it's like, who do you got left there, Ezra? Who who's now representing Rebel Media? I don't know. I mean, in a way, it's kind of beneficial to the, some of the others in the alternative media because people will be looking for a different source now, right? So it's kind of beneficial to those in the alternative media, and kudos to you, right? And stay true to and, and firm to your proper principles and convictions, right? Don't play politics in this manner, or don't be authoritarian. That's, you know, freedom of speech is that important. Ezra should learn this by now. You'd think that someone in the media would understand that intrinsically, but hey. But let's read a little bit into this. This is a, it's a National Post article. How Ezra Levant built an extreme media juggernaut, became a major player in the far-right movement, and watched it all begin to unravel inside rebel media. This is a story about a hypothetical made real. It's a thought exercise about limits and lines and what happens when those warp and disappear. Picture this, a man careens through the fringes of public life. He chases against boundaries. He sues and gets sued. He has talent and drive but lacks something. A filter maybe, or just someone to tell him when enough's enough. So he offends. He gets things wrong. He burns bridges and loses gigs. He never quite edges into the mainstream. And I, actually, I will say right now, I'm glad there is such a thing as rebel media out there. While I may not agree with everything that Ezra and some of his uh, subordinates put forth present as a narrative, as a dialogue, I am very much thankful that they aren't just going along and aligned with the, the dominant political narrative that's put forth presented by a lot of the established media candidates. So even though like I you know, I'm I'm not a full supporter of, of the rebel, but I am very much appreciative of at least as another alternative voice out there. So even though Ezra may very well deserve to be pointed to and pointed out as someone that's, you know, 
doing things wrong, but who's doing this for anyone in the establishment media? That's the thing. I mean, I'm, I'm all with you with trying to hold rebel, like rebel media and Ezra to this very, very high standard of journalism, but what the fuck? I'm seeing people in the establishment media trying to hold the rebel to this, you know, and I'll agree, like very high standard. I'm with you on that. But where's that being happening? Where are you seeing that in a lot of the other establishment media outlets, right? <laughs> The bar has been set way, way lower than even fucking Revel at this stage of the game for some of the established media that lives in Canada, right? <coughs> CBC. <coughs> but, I mean, hello, do you hear any kind of mass outrage or or media narratives that's pointing the kind of hypocrisy and the political pandering that happens through a lot of the establishment media or the CBC in particular? No. So, once again, it's, it's just, it's diatribe and political posturing and pandering to a particular narrative or to just kind of say, hey, I'm, I'm trying to remove myself, right? It's it's cowardly, to be honest with you. You know, you don't have to agree with Ezra and, and the fallout and all the, you know, let that stuff play out, right? That's kind of the free market happening because Ezra, right? They're not, that's the free market. This actually, you know what? This is a perfect example right here. Is look at the difference between the free market Ezra has to have voluntary in interactions with his employees. They have the ability to quit, right? They don't have to fucking worry about the fact that they, they, they're beholden to their political gods, right? So you're seeing that there's this kind of stuff happens only in the private realm. In the government-mandated realm like CBC or a lot of these other propagandist outlets or established media outlets that are a quasi-arm of the political structure of the political landscape in this country. You're not seeing that there, right? No, they want to keep all their skeleton, skeletons in the closet. They want to keep any controversy hidden and obscured from your view. So no matter how you look at this, yeah, it's bad for Ezra and it's bad for the rebel. And hopefully he'll learn and because it's profit driven right his his capitalist venture is profit driven well, well if he wants to be profitable and remain profitable or relevant well you'll see he'll have to change his position his his posturing or or, or how he deals with his employees going forward I wish we could do this, like I say, with the CBC. I wish you could see this put forth and presented towards people in the established media of the Crown Corporation, right? Of the Fifth Estate. <laughs> so far, no. Nope. And do I see it anywhere on the horizon in the immediate future? Not really. But anyways, yeah, I'll tie this video up. I post a link to this article in the description of the video below. But I just point, wanted to point out that, yes, the rebels going through a lot of hard times right now, and and good for them, especially if Ezra is not treating his uh, subordinates, his employee, in a proper manner. I'm all about yeah, you know, holding each other to account, employer employee. Let's hold each other to account. But I will point out the hypocrisy from those in the established media or those in the failing media that are just trying to do anything sensationalized style reporting or tabloid style reporting to remain remain relevant in any way. Right? Enough with the hypocrisy. Step up, own up to your own failures, or once again, you should get left in the dust just like the rest of them. It's Canadian Libertarian, and I love liberty.